For the past 17 years of my life, I've been preparing for my future. At least, that's what it feels like. I've studied and worked in hopes of providing a happy and stable future for myself. I've always had big dreams like becoming a doctor and maybe even having a family of my own. But if we continue the way that we are now, I may never be able to achieve my dreams. We are at a dangerous tipping point, and if we fall, there's no return. The danger that I'm talking about is climate change caused by greenhouse gas emissions. An atmospheric carbon concentration of 350 parts per million is considered to be safe, but we are currently soaring far above that at an average of 407 parts per million. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but a year ago, it was 404. This increase in atmospheric carbon concentration contributes to the greenhouse effect, which causes the planet to heat up. This increase in global temperatures sets in motion many positive feedback loops, but by far the most devastating of these is the melting of permafrost. As the name implies, permafrost is supposed to remain frozen permanently. But when permafrost melts, it releases methane, a greenhouse gas that is far more potent than carbon dioxide. This release of methane leads to more warming, which melts more permafrost, thus restarting the cycle. And this, coupled with other positive feedback loops, like the death of flora and forests, increased cloud cover, and the albedo effect will cause global warming to quickly spiral out of control. But the thing that is most important is not what could happen, but what we as individuals could do to stop it. And our biggest opponent is climate change denial. But we can no longer afford to hold these doubts. Today, the evidence that climate change is real is simply far too strong to deny. As I learned more and more about climate change, I became more and more terrified. But I asked myself, I'm only a teenager, what can I do about it? So I put it aside and waited for the government to make a difference. But as the years passed, nothing changed. And that's when I realized, this is everyone's problem. Since we all drive cars, we should all clean up after them. There are 1.2 billion cars on the road. Think about it. 1.2 billion cars spewing carbon dioxide into our atmosphere every year. Now, some people may go out and buy an electric or hydrogen car and think that they have done their part, but they usually resell their old car. And if that car is still on the road, then it's still part of the 1.2 billion cars spewing carbon dioxide. To truly halt our emissions, we need to either junk or convert our cars to run on a fuel that emits no carbon dioxide. We have to be responsible for our cars and clean up our own mess. Even though electric cars are a promising solution, adoption has been slow. It is estimated that they make up less than 1% of cars on the road, and hydrogen cars, even less. Due to limited adoption, they will not be able to decrease emissions soon enough to save us. And in addition, you would have to spend over $30,000 to $50,000 to buy one of these, and that's out of most people's budgets. In contrast, converting your car is much cheaper. This helps deal with what I consider to be one of the main problems with current green solutions, the cost. If only I convert my car, that won't even come close to making a dent in our yearly emissions. To make a true difference, we need to get everybody to convert their cars. With 1.2 billion cars on the road, think about how, how much carbon we could keep from going to the atmosphere if we converted our cars to run on a fuel that does not emit carbon dioxide. Now, people have been converting their cars to run on things like french fry oil and methane, methane for years, right? And more recently, people have been talking about using liquid or gaseous hydrogen. And if you would like to sign up for a conversion, you can sign up on our, way, um, our website, kidsforhydrogen.org. And after you sign up, we will inform you when there, are wait, um, when there are conversions available in your area. And we need enough people to sign up on this wait list because the only way you can get people to, you can get investors to invest is if there's interest, right? Once, and once there's proven public interest, we can open conversion stations. So how do we create a grassroots movement to inspire change? I plan to open Kids for Hydrogen chapters in all 50 states. We are contacting hundreds of environmental science teachers across America to open chapters in their communities. And they will be using materials that we provided for them, like videos and other flyers. They would also speak at events like Earth Day. 
The idea is that these chapters can inspire people to convert their cars and be a part of the movement. Chapters will help our grassroots network grow and take root in communities across America. So if you're like me, you're probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed with all this talk of you know, climate change and the future, right? We all feel hopeless, and so we continue to live our lives hoping that someone else will make the difference. But we can't afford to do that any longer. And the true beauty of converting our cars is it allows everybody to be a part of it. And it puts the solution directly into our hands. We all have the potential to write our own future with our current actions. Everything we do now will be what we pass on to our children. I don't want to be remembered as the generation that doomed our Earth. I want to be remembered as the generation that saved it. Will you join me? Thank you. <laughs>